we got an exciting video today. It's on coffee. Well, specialty coffee. The good stuff, you know? The yum yum. Yum yum to the tum tum. And actually, I forgot mine, so I'll be right back. Give me one sec. Ooh, had a good. I want to explain what it is, why it's expensive, uh, what I think of it. So let's go ahead and dive in, guys. What is specialty coffee? Specialty coffee is coffee, it's a Arabica coffee, that has a coffee score of 80 or above. That's kind of what the definition is. If you read in a few places and I got thinking, I was like, it's so much more than that. It's a lot more than that. To me, specialty coffee is a huge process. It's, it's a process from the farm all the way to the barista, to the consumer even. That's a lot to take in, that's a lot to dissect. I'm gonna kinda go over a bird's eye view of it. That way you get an idea of what all goes in to specialty coffee. It's a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a poop ton. So let's break that down then. Specialty coffee. The SCA has a lot of standards as far as what specialty coffee is. There's farming processes that have to be met. There's the processing, the milling of the bean. There's standards there. There's shipping standards. There's roasting standards. There's green coffee standards. There's barista standards. There's how to brew the coffee standards. And a lot of people miss the whole concept of specialty coffee is the entire spectrum. It's not just the cup at the end or where the coffee comes from. You can have a 95 score coffee at origin, be put on a crappy boat, and by the time it gets to the roaster, roasted three years later because they forgot it in a warehouse somewhere, finally gets to the barista who doesn't brew it correctly, and it's it's not specialty anymore. It's not specialty coffee. So real quick, with that being said, let's dive into it. So at the farmer level, usually specialty coffee is grown up higher in the mountains. And that's where a lot of the flavors come from. The, it's the density of the beans, the atmosphere, the altitude, all that stuff plays in to giving these beans a great flavor. After that, it has to be processed. It has to be processed by certain standards. It has to be picked correctly. Specialty coffee really only considers ripe beans picked during the farming and processing point. A lot of times farmers will pick everything at one time or they'll do two passes. And a lot of times what you'll get is unripe cherries mixed in with overripe cherries mixed in with the good cherries. After that, it has to be processed correctly. You know, how long was it laid out to dry? Like there's so many variables there that have to be met. And then the green coffee buyer comes in. How are they exporting the coffee? You know, what's it being bagged in? What's it being shipped in? Is there high moisture content that is there? All those variables play into it because you can have a really good cup of coffee but if it's packaged and shipped poorly well then you no longer have specialty coffee even before it gets to the roaster well now that it makes it to the roaster you may have a roaster who doesn't know what he or she is doing think i got the chance and i ain't gonna waste it honey dripping romance so therefore you may have a really good coffee shipped and packaged really well and the roaster just completely doesn't uphold his end of the bargain basically. At that point, it's not really specialty coffee. It won't score to what it's needing to be scored at. If you roast a coffee in three minutes and it's already charcoaled, something happened there. It's not specialty at that point. Even though you may have gotten specialty coffee green, it doesn't mean when your output after you've roasted it is still specialty coffee. At that point, the coffee shop has control of the specialty coffee. And if all the processes have been upheld to this point, then it's still specialty coffee. But as soon as the barista has it and they don't grind it correctly, they don't extract it properly, they leave it out too long, is it specialty coffee? Everybody has to uphold that bargain. Everybody he has skin in the game all the way until the last person takes a sip of that coffee. And the consumer plays a huge portion of this too. If we have more people that are willing to invest the you know amount of money it takes to get that type of quality all the way through this huge supply chain, then we'd be able to have farmers producing and sustainably producing better coffee. So that leads me into my second thing I want to talk about is why is it so expensive? A lot of people always ask you whenever you're first starting out roasting and you're, you're, you're trying to get push the specialty coffee and stuff like that, why does it cost so much? Well, it's a very tough process to make sure it gets to that entire supply chain to the consumer at the highest quality that everybody can make it. 
green coffee is only as good as green coffee is until the roaster touches it. At that point, the roaster, they can't make it any better. They can bring out the best of what that coffee can offer or less. They can't make the coffee better. The coffee's already as good as it's going to get. The roaster has to just find where that sweet spot is, where's that specialty level at. And that's really the importance of a good quality roaster. It's not just to take some green, roast it, throw it out there into the world and say, hey, I think it tastes good. It's much more than that. Same thing with a barista. It's not about just mixing some grounds up in some water and serving it to somebody. It's the quality of the water. It's the quality of the grind. It's the quality of all the details, the extraction, all that where it needs to be whenever that person drinks that cup of coffee. If you want to get more into the weeds, the SCA has a basically a whole protocols and standards for specialty coffee throughout the supply chain. So why specialty coffee? Why, why, why should we focus on specialty coffee? By putting more focus on specialty coffee and consumers partaking in the specialty coffee revolution, we're able to help improve the farmer's sustainability, their lives, uh, educating their children, their kids, their health care, stuff like that. The simple things that, you know, most people, we kind of take for granted nowadays. This additional income they may get, that could be the difference between quality education versus not going to school at all. If you focus on specialty coffee, eventually coffee is only going to improve. I recently read a book, uh, it's called Java Tracker by Dean Sekhon. I think this is how you say his last name. Not quite sure on that one. Sorry, Dean, if I messed it up. But anyway, I'll link it in the description below. Uh, just go down there and I'll have the book. It's actually on Audible, I listened to it. He actually narrates it, terrific narrator. Um, I was immersed. Like There were times where I was literally trekking through Kenya, Papua New Guinea, and I just felt I was there. And it really opened my eyes on how little the farmers actually get paid. Like, I knew it was not much, but I didn't realize, like, how little it actually was. Like, you're talking in some places of the world, maybe only a few hundred dollars a harvest is what they make. I just remember thinking, like, wow, that's, even if they made a hundred dollars extra, that's, that's a ton of money to them. So, definitely check him out. After you read somebody's book and they narrate it, it's like, it's like your buddies. I'm a buddy, Dean. <laughs> anyway, that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, specialty coffee is not that complicated. It's, it's complicated to the players in it. It's, it's complicated to the individuals that are, you know, throughout the process because everybody's got to uphold their end of the bargain. And that's really what specialty coffee comes down to, upholding your end of the bargain in wherever it's at. If you're the consumer, making sure you're buying specialty coffee. That way we're eventually getting better coffee and it's trickling through these systems back to the farmer. Specialty coffee, in a nutshell, basically helps quality focused farmers connect with like-minded roasters and, and buyers and allows them to sell it basically at a better price. And by doing this, it allows the coffee quality to continue to be the focus going forward, but then also it allows them to put some focus and time into their families as well. So with that being said, I truly appreciate y'all making it to this part of my video. And if you did, I just want to say I'm thinking of creating a Patreon account that will eventually allow me to set up a podcast. I don't have any podcast equipment, which is kind of why I kind of want to use the Patreon platform to help me out with that. And then once I get a certain amount of Patreons or a certain amount of, you know, budget, whatever I decide makes sense, then we'll go ahead and start a hopefully non-sponsored podcast. I hate podcasts where you got to listen to so many ads before it starts. And so that's why I'd rather if, if I can keep it strictly Patreon funded and based I would like to do that. Uh, if you are interested, if you would like to, you know, participate in that, if you think it's something that you may want to eventually listen to, a podcast from me or something like that, let me know in the comments about Patreon. Anyway, guys, yeah, if y'all like this video, just let me know what you thought. Let me know if you agree. You may not agree. You may think it's, you know, something completely different. I try to answer all the comments. I truly do. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer. Just have my third child. Things are getting crazy. <laughs> Things are getting crazy. So uh, lots of coffee. Lots of coffee. Been drinking lots of coffee. Love y'all. Peace out. If y'all need anything from me, hit me up again in the comments. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, all the places. Just find me. Hey. Love y'all. Peace out. Head out, guys. Head out. You were drinking wine. <laughs> you were speaking Portuguese. I was making lots of noise busking on the city streets I came back from Brooklyn but you didn't come back for me